American novelist Michael Chabon published The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay in 2000, which was awarded the 2001 Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. Joseph, Joe, Cavalier is 19 years old, when he arrives in New York City as a refugee in 1939, and moves in with his 17-year-old cousin Sammy Clayman. Joe hides in a coffin and flees Nazi-occupied Prague with the assistance of his tutor, Kornblum, leaving behind Thomas, Joe's younger brother, and the rest of his family. As the plot progresses, Joe and Sammy both discover their own artistic and entrepreneurial creative niches. Despite their common love of sketching, the two have other ties to Jewish stage magician Harry Houdini. Sammy is the son of the mighty Molecule, a strongman on the vaudeville circuit, and Joseph studied magic and escapology in Prague, which helped him escape Europe. Sammy hires Joe as an illustrator for the Empire Novelty Company after seeing Joe's creative potential. Empire owner Sheldon Annapol tries to enter the comic book industry using Joe and Sammy's inventiveness in an effort to partake in the recent cultural and financial success of Superman. Sammy begins writing adventure narratives under the alias Sam Clay with Joe providing the illustrations. The two enlist the assistance of a number of other Brooklyn teens to create amazing midget radio comics. They're both passionate about their project, confident about their ability to make money, and constantly anxious about their bosses' reactions. The Escapist, a fictional anti-fascist superhero is portrayed in the magazine. Sammy and Joe created the character. The authors and illustrators of the comic The Escapist enjoy enormous popularity, but unlike the team behind Superman, they only get a little portion of the money. Due to their personal issues, Joe and Sammy take a while to realize that they are being taken advantage of. Joe is trying to assist his family in leaving Prague and has fallen in love with the bohemian Rosa Sachs, who has her own artistic goals, while Sammy is trying to learn more about himself and mainly wants to advance in his professional and literary career. For several months after moving to New York, Joe's desire to support his family is evident in his work, which, in spite of his employer's worries, continues to be virulently anti-Nazi. As this is happening, he spends an increasing amount of time with Rosa, performing as a magician at the bar mitzvahs of the children of people Rosa's father knows. Despite this, he sometimes feels regret for diverting his attention from protecting his family. Joe's last attempt to bring his family to the United States resulted in him putting his younger brother aboard a ship that was sunk by a squats in a hideout in the Empire State Building, known only to a small circle of magician friends. Despite numerous attempts and significant financial sacrifice, Joe ultimately fails to bring his family to the United States. Sammy falls in love with Tracy Bacon, the escapist's radio host, in the meanwhile. Clay accepts Sammy's invitation to go to Hollywood after Tracy is chosen to play the escapist in the movie version. The private dinner is raided by the neighborhood police as well as two off-duty FBI agents later, when Tracy and Sammy travel to a friend's beach home with many other homosexual couples. Except for two guys who hide beneath the dining table, one of them is Sammy. All of the men present at the gathering are detained. Sammy and the other guy are sexually assaulted by FBI agents who act in their official capacity. After seeing this episode, Sammy makes the decision to end his relationship with Tracy because he finds it impossible to live under the continual danger of persecution. Some time after Joe departs, Sammy weds Rosa, moves in with her, and raises Tommy in what looks to be a normal nuclear family. Tommy, however, manages to take private magic lessons from Joe for the greater part of a year in the Empire State Building without anyone else knowing. Sammy and Rosa are unable to keep all of their secrets from him. The Cavalier and Clay team is finally reunited thanks in large part to Tommy 
who works tirelessly to discover a fresh creative path for comics. Joe relocates to Sammy and Rose's home. Sammy's homosexuality is disclosed on national television shortly after. This makes Rosa, Sammy, and Joe's efforts to reunite the family even more difficult. In the end, Sammy wants to go to Los Angeles, and Joe and Rosa attempt to dissuade him by telling him that Joe has acquired Empire Comics. The next morning, when the couple awakens, Sammy has vanished. Several incidents in the book are based on the lives of real comic book writers, such as Will Eisner, Jack Kirby, Bob Kane, Stan Lee, Jerry Siegel, Joe Shuster, Joe Simon, and Jim Steranko, to whom the book is dedicated in the afterword. Numerous historical personalities, including the Golden Age of Comics itself, which begins soon after Superman's debut and ends with the Kefauver Senate hearings, two occasions sometimes considered to define the era, play small parts. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.